Scotland nation. Whereas the people of India, having solemnly resolved to constitute India into a sovereign democratic republic, adopted, enacted, and gave themselves on the 26th day of November 1949 in their constituent assembly, the Constitution of India. And whereas it has been declared by the said constitution that India, that is Bharat, shall be a union of states comprising within the union the territories which were hitherto the governor's provinces, the Indian states, and the chief commissioner's provinces. And whereas this, the 26th day of January, has been fixed for the commencement of the said constitution. Now, therefore, it is hereby proclaimed that on and from this, the 26th day of January 1950, India, that is Bharat, shall be a sovereign democratic republic. And the union and its component units, the states, shall exercise all power and functions of government and administration in accordance with the provisions of the said constitution. The High Commissioner will now take the oath of allegiance. On this day, when India becomes a sovereign democratic republic, I send my warmest greetings to all our countrymen abroad. In the long and eventful annals of our country, this day will have a special place. The pledge taken long ago is fulfilled, and every Indian, wherever he may be, has a new status as a citizen of the Republic. This brings new rights and new rights of the Republic of India must remember that he has the dignity and the prestige of his motherland in his keeping, and he must be Our deep sense of gratitude and appreciation of your unique and distinguished services to our motherland as government of the Republic, which our people in the exercise of the sovereign rights have given to themselves. We rejoice with humility in the resolve rooted in through the passages of the Himalayas, or even in the earlier days came by sea or by land before our own. I say this because it is in public of India. This day we remember with gratitude the pioneers who went for us, who for a hundred years, more intensively for 60 years, and still more intensively for the last 25 years, labored to make this day possible. Two and a half years ago, the British Empire passed power into the hands of the Indian people. We became an independent country, and today, by the proclamation of our constitution, made by our own people in the exercise of their wisdom and their determination and their collective responsibility. We have set the formal seal to the inauguration of that freedom in the form of a constitution. They represent the collective wisdom of our nation, the experience of democratic peoples in other countries, as well as the facts that surround us. It is our duty as men and women of India to give loyal allegiance to that constitution. As people in a democratic community, we have the right to criticize, to improve, to reconstruct, but we have no right to challenge the foundations of the state which we have now laid. That is ours, that belongs to our people, and that belongs to the generations that come after us. Friends, the enjoyment of that freedom is the right of birth and the inheritance of a great motherland. Our thoughts naturally go. They are bound by common religion. Public. In actual content, our independence. I greet you in the name of the Republic and ask you to go forward with faith and courage, determined to be friendly, to be free, and to live as free men and women. <laughs> <laughs>